So, great, it's good to be here. And um, yeah, my name's Ian Falk, I'm senior leader, pastor, with my wife Rachel. She's um, fighting off a bug at the moment, so is resting at home. So please uh, remember her in your prayers. Well, today, so it's the graduation day of the School of Supernatural. And so uh, I'm going to be speaking, you know, to the students um, and also to all of us. It's, if you like, this is a bit like a commissioning day, in a sense. You've graduated. You've graduated for a purpose. You've graduated to be commissioned by the Lord for a mission. And um, not only, of course, the students of the School of Supernatural, but that applies to every single one of us because we have all been, of course, commissioned by the Lord. We've all been commissioned with the Great Commission to go into all the world and to preach good new, the good news. Um, so this message is for all of us, of course, and, um, but very much for the students as well. And uh, I'm going to start off by thinking about the call that we experience from God and the call that men and women in the Bible uh, receive from the Lord. And I felt led to refer to a couple of those calls and to read them out. And I want you to listen to these calls from the Lord recorded in Scripture for us and they apply to us as well. These things are recorded that they might be an example for us. And all of the promises of God, all of the, the calls and the promises of God are yes and amen to us in Jesus Christ. So these things apply to us, these calls as well. And here's the first one. This is a call to Isaiah. So students, listen up to this and all of us. The Lord, this is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 11 to 14, if you want to look at it at some point, but I'll read it out to you. This is the New Living Translation. The Lord has said to me in the strongest terms, do not think like everyone else does. Do not be afraid that some plan conceived behind closed doors will be the end of you. Do not fear anything except the Lord Almighty. He alone is the Holy One. If you fear Him, you need fear nothing else. He will keep you safe. You've got nothing to fear. That's to Isaiah. Here's one to Jeremiah in chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. Again, I'm speaking prophetically to people here and to the students. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my spokesperson to the world. Oh, sovereign Lord, I said, I can't speak for you. I'm too young. Don't say that, the Lord replied, for you must go wherever I send you and say whatever I tell you. And don't be afraid of the people, for I will be with you and take care of you. I, the Lord, have spoken. I wonder if you can see any connection there in those two callings. Um, is there a theme that's coming through at all? Uh, here's another one. What about the call to Joshua uh, when he stepped up? And he took over from, uh, from Moses. This is what God was saying to him. Be strong and courageous. Maybe could we take the, this, this sound down just a tiny bit, please? Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land swore to their ancestors to give them. I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and courageous. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will give you every place where you set your foot. Be strong and very courageous. 
Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Are we seeing a theme at all coming in these calls to the men and the women of God that we see in the Bible and we see in life? How about when... uh, God came to Gideon and he called him and said, I've called you, brave and mighty warrior. Come, this was the angel of the Lord. It was Jesus himself. And he had a, a work for him to do. And he said, but you know, I'm, I'm the least of the clan. My clan's the least. He was hiding in a threshing floor. But God said, no, fear not. I am with you. Go now in the strength that you have and I will be with you. Gideon. And we can go through so many more. We can think of even in the New Testament, um, Paul saying to Timothy, do not be timid, do not be anxious, you know, but preach boldly the word as, uh, as you have been called to do. So the theme I want to, to say to everybody here is do not fear, do not be afraid, fear overcome fear. This is the first point. You must overcome fear. Well done, uh, all the students for stepping out, stepping in and, and joining the school for that year and pushing forward. Well done. Now you have been trained, you have been prepared, you've been equipped for something. Um, whenever we undertake training, it is for a purpose. And so God is sending you. God, is, God has equipped you for a purpose. What are you going to do now that you've been trained? What are you going to do with the new skills that you have? How are you going to practice those things that we've been practicing all year with the school? Because that is so important that we practice, that we put into practice It's not just theory, it's not just words. We know that um, faith without action is dead, is pointless, is useless, is hypocritical, is, is a waste of time. Faith must be, if you like, followed by action. Faith is worked out with action. Action shows where where the faith really is and what the faith is. So, do not fear. Do not fear. That is my word, the first word for you today, students, members of our church. Fear will stop you from moving forward and acting. Where does fear come from? Well, we know that we hear of the spirit of fear, so fear can be sent by the devil as, as, a, as a spirit to intimidate and stop you. And we, we know this happens. And we would hear words coming like, you can't do this. You're no good. You're not up to this. You're not ready for this. Don't do this. How dare you try and do this? If you try and, do, if you try and speak, if you step out, who do you think you are? This is the fear and intimidation that seeks to stop you and me from serving the Lord, from acting, from stepping out. But we we must absolutely resist fear. It's a choice. It's a decision to make. When, When God said to Joshua, be strong and courageous, you've got to decide. Being strong is saying... No, I'm going to choose to do this. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to be determined. I'm going to push through. I'm going to act. I'm going to speak. I'm going to push through the fear. And, And we push through. We push through our fear. And the other side of the fear is the victory. Um, but we have to decide to push through the fear. Um, it's a decision. Choose, choose today that you will push through the fear, you will overcome fear. Take courage. Um, If we think of fear, we we, we hear the phrase that people are paralyzed by fear, aren't they? 
We know they're, they're paralyzed. They are petrified. That means, you know, you're turned into a stone. That's what petrified means. Petrification. I'm, I, I can't move. I'm, I'm, I'm so frightened. I'm paralyzed with fear. It's stopping me. Stopping me from, from acting. Stopping me from doing. Stopping me from obeying. Stopping me from speaking. But we have to resist the fear. Resist the devil and say, no, I will, act, I will put into practice these things. And then when we do, God is going to back us up. God is going to, uh, he's going to help us, of course, with the fear as well. He's, but you have to choose. You have to decide. God will not force you to, um, to make a move as such. So when I think of, so the, the purpose of fear and the purpose of the schemes of the enemy when sent to, to bring fear and intimidation um, and we can see it right through the Bible in different places where there were the schemes of the enemy. You think of Nehemiah when he went to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem and the, the schemes that were sent to intimidate and stop him from doing it. The locals, the Arabic people, other people, even, even the Hebrew Jewish people were sent and they were speaking words of intimidation. What do you think you're doing? They were mocking at first. Then they were saying, you are rebelling against it's the king. Don't you know when he hears about this, he will come after you. There was time and time again, intimidation, intimidation to stop him acting and moving and doing and obeying the word of God. We must resist fear and step into our destiny and purpose. Because fear is seeking to stop you, stop you in your tracks, stop you from moving, stop you from changing, stop you from stepping forward. It, fear wants to stop you, to petrify you, stop you. And we must push through it. Stop you from what, though? If it's going to stop you and make you still and petrify you and hold you back, stop you from what, though? What do you think? It's stop you from acting, from moving, from obeying, from actually making a move and obeying. That this is what faith is. Faith is, is actually obeying God and moving and speaking and sharing and, and changing and moving forward into all the call that God has for you. But we have to take courage, overcome fear, and step into these things. So students, we're going to step into, I'm speaking to myself, step into, you know, a greater expectancy. We're going to go and we're going to speak to people. We're going to expect God to heal people. We're going to expect miracles. That means you've got to step forward, pray for folks to be healed, um, etc. But fear wants to stop you. Stop you from taking that step, that step of faith, that step of faith. What step of faith are you taking in obedience to God right now? Now, so students, God has that next step of faith for you to progress with him. He said, you're trained, you're ready to go, let's go. What are you going to do with it? Come on. Uh, it's no good if we're trained to do something and we don't do it, of course. I, I said that already. Say if you're trained to, and I know I've heard these, um, I may have even shared it in the past. It could have been an image from William Booth or where the, uh, the life boatmen were trained, but they never went out to save lives. They were going from conference to conference and learning all about how to save lives, but never actually putting it into practice. Some churches and Christians can be like that. We're constantly going from meeting to meeting and praying about how we're going to, you know, do more and, and, and do this and do that, but never actually doing it and putting it into practice because fear is stopping us. Is there anything else that would be stopping you from putting these things into practice? We might say apathy, laziness. But generally, it's fear. 
It really is fear. And interestingly, at the prayer meeting, we had a wonderful prayer meeting on Friday, and Grace was sharing a very similar thing, very practical thing about just going up to people to speak in every and any situation in life, in the shops, here, there, everywhere, being led by the Spirit, and just pushing through and saying, no, I'm not going to listen to that. I'm going to speak out. And she shared examples. And, and, you know, then all of a sudden, heaven breaks out and God backs you up. The, the, the thing is, God is not going to take you and, and s- step in for you. He's not going to take your feet and step you forward into your act of faith, into your action. You have to do it yourself. I have to do it. I've got to do that. God says he will meet us when we, we make that move to him. We make that move to, towards the things of the kingdom. He will come and meet us there. He's not going to overturn or um, overpower our will. He's given us that free will. So fear, we've got to push through the fear, push through the fear, push through the fear, and act, act. If we look at um, the saints who were called, every single one of them in response, all of them acted in faith. They, they took that step of obedience right from the very father of faith, Abraham. God said, now come, follow me. Go to the place I'm going to tell you to go, and I'm going to do something amazing through you. I've got a plan for you. And he, Abraham went. He took the step. He left his father's home. He left his, his, his country and went forward with God. He didn't know where he was going to be going. He didn't know it. It wasn't all worked out, but he was obedient. He faced the fears, pushed through the fears, and God said, yes, 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 yes. That is what I'm looking for. That is faith. That is trusting in me. You're not going to be able to work out what's ahead, folks. That is not faith. You, you, You have to step in. We have to. Ian has to, Rachel, all of us have to make the step. God will not make the step for you because he won't overturn your free will. What step does God want you to make to step into your destiny, to step in, to change? Things are not going to change until you step into it. What move do you have to make? What is God saying for you to do because he is telling you to do I said you might say well I don't know what God wants me to do does he want me to do anything of course he does you just got to ask him you've got to make the steps towards it you won't be able to work it all out but you step in and you begin that walk and things are revealed this this nature of life and, and the way God blesses the courageous, even in the non-Christians, of course. You know, this world has been set up where God blesses the courageous. And we, we, we know that uh, expression that fortune favors the brave. That, that's an expression in the world, and it's so true. Fortune, meaning, you know, the blessings favor those people who step forward and f- step into and face their fears. And God will bless that. God blesses that everywhere. So what do you need to step into and step through your fear? It's about making that decision. I will. I will do this. And, and it's just a beginning step. And God, whoosh. The minute you make that step, God is there getting you on to the next step, the next step, the next step, the next step. He's with you. So it's not, I'm not, this is not about all about self at all, but it's about making that first step and and walking through the fear, refusing the fear, taking courage from God and stepping forward. You You might need to leave behind what what you've been holding on to, stepping forward, leaving it behind, what you've been used to, what you're comfortable with. When, when we think of when Eli, 
Elisha was called. Elijah came along, threw the cloak over him, and, and so he was called to follow Elijah. And he, he, was, he was riding 12 pair of oxen, 24, plowing the fields. And, you know, he must have been pretty wealthy to have all that. And yet he, he killed all the oxen. He burnt them on the plow. He gave the meat away to all the folks. And he said, no, I'm walking away from this. I'm following my call. I'm following this man. He didn't know what was ahead. He had no idea. But he stepped into God and God's will and God's call. And God says, seek first my kingdom and, and my gospel and my, seek first these things and I will provide for everything for you. That was Elisha, Joshua we talked about, crossing over, Abraham left his father. Everybody made a move, made a step, moved into, not knowing what was ahead. The disciples, Jesus said, come follow me, leave your nets, leave your fishing, follow me. And they, they left their, their nets. That was the provision for their family. That was their job. That was all they knew. And they said, no, I'm, I'm, I come, I follow you, Lord. I step out. Here, here I go. I don't know what's going to happen, but I trust you. You said you will provide, and I believe you. And uh, they were called to the greatest mission of eternity, to be a co-worker with God, to win the lost. That's the same mission and commission on every single one of us. Walk through the fear. Make that decision. I, I, I shared, didn't I? I remember my Josie was, was just sweeping the floor in her hairdressers, you know, and she'd had to drop out of, of school. And she thought, no, you know, I, I had that dream to be a lawyer and she said, and she made that first step. She made the decision. She could have easily said, no, it's such a long journey. There's no way I can go. I'm not very well. And I, I'm just, you know, I'll, I'll stick with what I'm doing. No, she made that choice. And she made the step. And she contacted the college. And she got into that college. And then from the college, she got the, she got the award into university, was awarded onto the law uh, degree. She got a first and the law degree. She got into the, um, one of the top law firms in, in Kent. And she starts there. In, after the summer, she starts at that law firm. She's just about to finish her master's. She's doing it. You know, she was at a, a consultant about um, the, this uh, problem she's been having with her, her bowels and what have you, Crohn's disease that she's been battling with. And um, the consultant had the blood results and said, how on earth have you managed to do this? All her blood results were so poor. You know, she was, um, what do they call it, anemic, and vitamin D was down, all these things, and, and she was commended by the consultant. Of course, I'm a proud dad, but what the point I'm trying to make is she just made that decision to, to apply, to go for it, to step out. And then, of course, she had the the journey to walk, but that's where God says, I will be with you. I will strengthen you. I will help you if you will just step out, step in. And, um, and she, she has done. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. What's God calling you to step into? Step into that's beyond you. Step into that's new for you, strange for you, but you know it's God. You know it's God. You've got to make a change. You've got to leave behind the old. Trust in God. Step forward. Do not fear. Refuse fear. And act. Respond. Move. Do something. That's why I brought this case up here. This is faith. This is faith. We're going to move. We're going to do something. We're going to get on the move with God. Who's getting on the move with God? Come on, let's go on the move with God. This is an exciting adventure. If, you, if, you, if, you, if, if you're in inertia and you're just sticking around, what does it mean? I'm not saying leave, leave this church or leave Ashford. Or I'm, I'm talking about just be mobilized by God 
and say, you know, what you need to do, and say, well, what am I supposed to do? Okay, I, I, I agree. What shall I do? Just start somewhere. Get moving. Get involved. You can serve here in the church. You know, we've had more mission trips this year than, than I can remember of any year, there's, and there's still more to come. Sign up. Oh, I haven't got the money for it. God will give you the money if you trust him. This is what he said he would do. Um, we, we've made moves where we just have not had the money uh, to do these things. I know, don't be foolish, but if God is saying, hey, come on, I will provide for you, and you sense that, yes, 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 and then go for it, go for it, and God will back you up, not just in money, but it could be with your work, with time, with making time to do these things. So do something. Now, last of all, I just want to say that why? Because, you know, it's not just about you, this choice and this obedience. It is not just about you. It is about the many lives that you will or won't impact as you do or don't obey the call of God. If you do or don't succumb to fear, it's, it's about all the other lives that will be impacted by that decision. So think about that. It's not just about you. I haven't got too much time, but uh, I had the, ex the example of there was a story in Samaria in Kings, again around the time of Elisha, where the four lepers were during a famine and a siege, were locked outside the city. The, the city was in famine. They were all dying. They were eating their own children. Horrible, disgusting. Uh, this was how bad it was. The four lepers were outside. The, they were surrounded by an Aramean army, huge army. And the lepers said to themselves, you know, we're dead. We're going to die. If we stay here, we die. If we go into our town... You know, if we try and get in, we're going to die. If we take courage and go to the Arameans, our, our enemies as lepers, we, we're likely to die. We could die. We could very well die, but we may live. We may get something. Now, now this is, can you see how even that is blessed by the Lord when they decided to go to the Aramean camp and they set out there God removed all of the Arameans. He chased them away by whatever means he, he, he did. And they supernaturally heard armies coming and they fled. And the, the four lepers walked into that camp and they had themselves any of the food they wanted, all of the riches they wanted. But they said to themselves, after they'd made fill of themselves and hidden away the riches, they said, it's not good that we keep this to ourselves. This has happened for a purpose. And they went and they went back to the city and told them about it. And of course, all of the, the famine was relieved. They plundered the Aramean camp. And through that decision, through that courage, through that step of faith, they brought blessing to so many others. Now they were lepers. They were in a famine. They were in a war. I mean, what's our excuse for not stepping forward into what God has for us? Do not fear. Resist fear. Act now. I'm speaking to somebody. I'm speaking to people here. God is calling you. Now is the time. Step in to your destiny. Because it's not just about you. It's about so many that will be impacted by your obedience. If we stay here, if we stay where we are, the lepers said we die. We shrivel. Nothing will change. Unless you change, unless you step, unless you take that step, you're not giving God anything to work with. God used those four lepers and he did more with them than he did with the king that was in the city because the king was fearful. So what's God calling you to do? What's stopping you from stepping in to what God's calling you to do? Dear graduates, are you ready to step in to the next thing that you've been called into, trained for, prepared for, equipped for? Are you ready? 
Come on, let's do it. Let's go. Ian, are you ready? What are we to do here now in Ashford with this incredible facility, this incredible army, this incredible revelation that we are all ministers of the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit of God? Ian, what are you going to do with that? Right. Okay, Lord, I better be obedient and put this fortress of the kingdom to good use both here in Ashford and to the nations, of course, which is happening. God's calling you. Can you hear him? Can you hear him? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Let, let God speak to you because he's, he's with you. He's going to back you up. At the, uh, at the prayer meeting, I had the verse. It just came to me. He who gathers during the summer is wise, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. The harvest, of course, we think of the harvest, we know the harvest speaks of the harvest of souls. Are we mobilized for the kingdom, for the harvest? Because if not... We're being disgraceful sons and daughters. Let's be mobilized. Let's refuse to, to bow and bend to fear. Amen? Amen? Amen. Would you stand with me? We're going to just pray. And uh, yeah, if we could have a, a keyboard, or that'd be great. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, we thank you for the awesome commission that you have entrusted us with and we have the privilege to run with I thank you Lord for every commission and call that you have released into this room and on every person I thank you that you empower and equip and anoint us with everything we need to fulfill our call and commission to serve you. I thank you that you are just looking for a yes, I choose. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I release that grace upon every person in this room to say, yes, I will. Yes, I will. I choose life. I choose my destiny. I choose my call. I choose you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Right now, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to just give you something to do and to act. Some action, something to do in obedience as a yes, I will. Lord, right now, just reveal to every person that act of obedience prompted and, and, and moved by you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God is speaking now. He's showing you what to do. It could be something very simple. It could be a step. It could be doing something as a preparation. Doing some training, some preparation. I know the students have just done theirs, but for you it might be preparing to be mobilized. When I made that step and, and did the um, stepped into that master's course it just opened doors it opened doors the Lord opened the doors and before I knew it I was here thank you Lord why don't you pray with me Heavenly Father Today I choose you. 
today I choose your call. Today I choose your commission. Help me to follow you now. Provide for me, Lord, as I step into my destiny. In Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, forgive us. This, I'll pray this now. Forgive us, Father, where we have allowed fear to stop us, fear to petrify us, to paralyze us, Lord. And Lord, we repent. And with your help, we will push through we will push through fears into our destiny. We will refuse the lies and we will believe you and your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now, some of you are going to be signing up for things, signing up to serve, to help, to be mobilized. And each, of course, we don't know how it's all going to work out, but it does begin the process, opens doors starts the journey thank you Lord you might be signing up for the new school of supernatural maybe that's a step for you to take